was it like uh, being part of something like this? We're so used to you being asked the questions under pressure. Yeah. So asking the questions to others, what, what does that role feel like? Oh, uh, it was brilliant. Um, I, I, I really enjoyed sort of, you know, having the earpiece in and having the director and producer talk to mm -hmm. me. Uh, and um, instead of sort of having to dredge up the answers from my brain, I mean, everything was like right in front of me on the auto cue. Yes. So it's so, almost, uh, it's almost like a day off you really, well, isn't it? Well, no. <laughs> <laughs> Not, you know, any job where you have to get in by like quarter to eight in the morning. I mean, I know everybody here has been here since about sort of quarter to four this morning. Um, but uh, yeah, on the chase, you basically don't start before nine. Ah, so okay, uh, yes. yeah, that, that was much a more bit, sensible. That was a bit uh, exhausting. It's a great mix. So the show really works for me. There's different age groups to begin with. And there's very yes. few shows like that, actually, where you've got the children head of the team. That's right. The kids are supposed to be in the driving seat. They chose the team. Uh, for three out of the five rounds, they choose um, who on the team is going to answer it, whether it's them or someone else. Yeah. So, yeah, they're in charge. They're loving it. I get a, such a kick when I watch it, when I actually get one of the answers right before they do. It's mm. like, oh, yes, that's brilliant. It makes you feel so good about yourself. It does, yes. <laughs> it doesn't happen often, sadly. Um, so me. <laughs> you learnt, of course, from the master, Bradley. I he think, is, and I mean, he's just so good. You know, we've been doing the chase since I joined the chase in 2010. So, you know, I have been watching him for like eight years. Yeah. Uh, and uh, absolutely, I learned from the best. He's so, so good. He's a bit of a unique force, actually, isn't he? He's so energetic. He and is, yes. Enthusiastic about everything, but such a pro with it. Absolutely. Um, I mean, we've been actually getting through filming the daytime shows faster and faster mm. because Bradley is just making the day move along so fast. Yeah. And the chase is just now part of our daytime routine. For it is, lot of yeah. I mean, I always say that this country is still in recession because everyone's getting off work early and rushing over to watch, watch uh, quizzes on TV, mm. it's brilliant. It's still, the, the appetite's certainly there. And you're yeah. heading off to Australia, in fact, soon, aren't you? I'm off the, to the Australia, in, let me think, in about slightly over a month. Right, okay. um, To do the Chase Australia. And is it just as big over there as it is here? Um, pretty much, I mean, Australia is smaller. Uh, and fewer people watch TV. Yeah. Um, but uh, yes, it, it does get very good ratings for Australia. Mm -hmm. um, and is, if there was anyone that you could be up against, if there was anyone you could pick on the chase, who would it be? I know David Hay made a bit of an impression on you, Anne. Yes, he was rather, you know, lickable. <laughs> what can you say? <laughs> <laughs> That's um, the quote of the morning, Anne. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, yeah, um, yeah, um, it'd be good to, I mean, Stephen Fry would never, I would think, probably agree to come on. I'd love to play John Sessions, because uh, he's an actor I've, I've always had a lot of time for mm. since he was on uh, TV a lot in the 80s. Yeah. And, uh, you know, very, very smart, very educated. Mm. So, yeah. It's interesting, though, um, when reading your story and everything that's happened to you up until the telly, point of your life. Yeah. I mean, you had real sort of struggles. You've been very honest, actually, about what you've been through. You were diagnosed with Asperger's at one point as That's well. That's right, There yes. was lots of things happening that you couldn't quite understand why it was happening. Yes. Until I mean, the diagnosis. That's right. I mean, about sort of 10 years ago, really things were hitting a low point because I was trying to get on with all the work that people wanted me to do. Um, and I didn't realise... I was trying to overload my brain with things, um, sleeping really badly, and then quite unable to do anything the next day. And everything was just kind of falling apart. Um, and uh, fortunately, um, I acquired this brilliant social worker called Jeff McKenzie, who um, came in and sat down and said, we will fix this, we will deal with all the debt and everything, and we will get you signed on. Um, and uh, I also... Um, uh, got, I applied for and was awarded disability living allowance, which some people had a problem when I mentioned this before. It's not what used to be called incapacity benefit. That's the one you get when you can't work. And I was still trying to work. Mm. You know, I am working now. Disability living allowance is the one that you get paid. It's quite a lot less. And it's if in your day-to-day -day life, your disability really impacts you, which mine does. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, people may find that hard to believe, but it really, really does. Mm. Um, that, nobody comes in my house because it's a mess, <sighs> because I can get out there and work or I can actually sort of live like a normal person. Yeah, yeah. And the chase really changed your life around then. Absolutely it? it's been did. a massive yes. part of, of oh, the upturn. Colossal, yes. Mm. 
Um, I mean, I, I always... People say to me, did you think it'd be this huge? I, I always thought it would be successful. I always thought we'd get another series. I didn't realise it was going to turn into this juggernaut. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, no.